Hi everyone, Dr. Bishop here. In this video, I'm going to go over understanding the results of an article about harm. Let's review the case and the article that we chose. You are on your third year primary care rotation and are seeing a geriatrics patient who is relatively advanced dementia and is now having behavioral issues of combativeness and confusion. The fellow with whom you are rotating is considering starting a new antipsychotic for the, his behavior, but has heard reports of complications with these medications and asks you to find evidence in the literature about the harms of atypical antipsychotics. You come up with this PICO question. In older patients, are antipsychotics versus no antipsychotics associated with kidney injury? You then searched the literature and found this article. In this video, we are going to learn the steps on how to answer the second question of our critical appraisal steps. What are the results? Let's revisit the study design of a cohort study. In cohorts, we take a group of patients who may or may not have been exposed to something harmful. We then look to see whether there is a correlation between their outcomes and the exposure. In this case, the exposure is antipsychotic medications. And the outcome is acute kidney injury. There are two questions that we need to answer. First, what is the magnitude of the harm and how precise are the estimates? And the second is, what is the number needed to harm? Remember, we want to focus on kidney injury and the researchers define that as hospitalizations within 90 days of taking the antipsychotic with evidence of kidney injury. Let's see if we can find this information back at the article. If we go back to the text of the article, we can see that there were approximately 122,000 patients who received an atypical antipsychotic drug. And there were almost 1.2 million patients who did not receive the drug. If you remember from the previous video, the researchers created a matched sample of patients who received the drug and those that did not receive the drug. Here we can see that a total of 97,000 patients received the drug and 97,000 patients did not receive the drug. As we discussed in the, in the validity video, this is called a match sample. If we scroll down a little further in the results section, we can see that 1,002 patients who received the drug had kidney injury and 602 patients who did not receive the drug had kidney injury. We now have enough information to start making some estimates of the harm. I've created a table to help us understand these results. If we look at the total number of patients, we know that 97,777 patients received the anti antipsychotics and the same number did not receive the antipsychotics. There were 1,002 patients who had kidney injury in the group that received the antipsychotics and 602 patients who had kidney injury that did not receive the antipsychotic. If we calculate the percentage of patients, this is 1.0% of patients and this is 0.6% of patients. Let's review a few terms that you learned in the session about therapy that apply to articles about harm. The first term is the relative risk, which is the ratio of the risk in the exposed group to the risk in the unexposed group. Here's the data for our study. Looking at these numbers, we can see that 1% of patients in the exposure group had, had kidney injury and 0.6% of patients in the control, the non-exposed group had kidney injury. The relative risk is simply one 
over 0.6 or 1.7. In real life language, we might say that patients who received an antipsychotic were 1.7 times as likely to develop acute kidney injury than patients who did not receive them. Like therapy studies, we also want to confirm that the confidence intervals around that relative risk or that effect do not cross one and are relatively narrow. If we look at the main results table for this article, which is listed as table one, we can see that the relative risk that these researchers calculated is 1.73, very similar to what we calculated and we can see that the 95% confidence interval is 1.55 to 1.92. This confidence interval does not cross one and is relatively narrow. So we can see that this estimate of relative risk is relatively precise. The table also shows us something called absolute risk increase, which is similar to the absolute risk reduction that you learned about in articles about therapy. The absolute risk increase is simply the arithmetic difference between the two risks. The absolute risk increase is simply the arithmetic difference between the two risks, or 1.0 minus 0 0.6, which we can see the researchers calculated to be 1, uh, 0 0.4. Let's go back to our process list to see what else we can do to interpret the results. The second question that we need to answer is what is the number needed to harm? That is, how many patients need to receive an atypical antipsychotic in order to harm one patient? The number needed to harm is very similar to the number needed to treat that you learned about in articles about therapy. The calculation for number needed to harm is simply 1 over the absolute risk increase which is expressed not as a percentage, but as a decimal point. So that means for this study, it's 1 over 0 0.004, which is 0.4% expressed as a decimal point. That is 250 patients. In real life language, we might say that we have to treat 250 patients to cause one case of acute kidney injury. To pull everything together, for this article, we calculated the relative risk of acute kidney injury, which was 1.7, the absolute risk increase, which was 0.4, and the number needed to harm, which was 250. Those are all the terms that I want you to know about reading articles about harm. In class, we will practice appraising the articles about harm We'll also spend some time thinking about applying these results to patients.